What's up everybody? Welcome to the Dual Sport Disport channel. Today I have my 2017 Ram Promaster 2500 with the 3.6 Pentastar V6. I have about 155,000 miles on it and it's time to replace the serpentine belt plus the idler pulleys and the tensioner pulley as well. And stay tuned, I'm gonna do a complete how-to on it and also how to save a ton of money instead of having to replace the whole tensioner. A little hack you can do to save some money instead of buying that whole thing. Looking in the engine bay here, the serpentine belt is on the left hand side and it's actually easier to get to it from underneath as far as I remember. I have been in that side of the engine one time before when I replaced this front cylinder head or the left side cylinder head. So I'm going to have to pull a couple things off. The first thing I'm going to do though is jack the vehicle up so I have a little more ground clearance underneath. And there's also a skid plate under there I'm going to have to remove. All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna do here is, I got two GoPros going just so you can see, but I'm gonna pull the wheel off because last week when I was replacing the wheel bearing, I could not get the ABS sensor out and accidentally broke it. So I have to replace that today anyways. Just uh, open up this wheel though, uh, wheel cavity is gonna help me pull all that skid plate stuff off and crawl into the vehicle easier, so. Okay, on the skid plate here, there's a few eight millimeter bolts and I'm going to take those off first. Three of them right there. Now I could probably get it the way it is, but I'm just gonna pull the whole thing off anyways. And there's one more in the back I gotta get to here in a second and one more on the side. Okay, right up in here, one more here. And there's one more large one here in the back. This is a 15 millimeter. It's being difficult. I'm just going to loosen it up and then rotate the skid plate out of the way. And there we go. Got this thing opened up. Alright, the first thing I'm doing before I pull the belt off is I'm just taking a nice visual look at the thing and the layout itself. There is a ribbed side of the belt and also a flat side. You can see one idler pulley here. The flat side goes against that. Ribbed side here along the main crankshaft. Another one here, ribbed side. Just kind of looking at the overall layout. And it helps if you have a cell phone to take a picture of it, just to make sure you get everything put together the right way. I also need to investigate a little bit of what it looks like to be dripping coolant. And that is right, uh, where is that? Right up there by the hose clamp. I see a little bit of coolant. So I don't know if that was from me messing around last time when I was doing the radiator. It very well could be, and most likely that's the case. I changed out the radiator a couple weeks ago, uh, but I just want to take another visual inspection and make sure I'm not leaking coolant anywhere. All right, now a lot of vehicles are like this, where on the tensioner pulley, this one right here, it is a 3 8 uh, square head, so that way you can use a ratchet on it and there's two ways it can go. I'm gonna be going to the loosen, so I'm just gonna pull it that way. And when I pull on it, 
I gotta try to pop the belt off somewhere easy. I'm just gonna probably pick an idler pulley, which is over here. I'm gonna try to slide it off there first, and then I can check the condition of these pulleys when I get the belt off. Now you might have to put a little bit of leverage on this thing to get it. Okay, got it. I just pulled with one hand. I might recommend if I do this again, a longer ratchet because that took a little bit of effort. But now that the tension is off the belt, I'm gonna just go ahead and work this thing out. And there we are. The belt is out. Well, that one's got a little bit of side to side play. I'll check the new one out and see if that's the case, but sounds like that one might uh, need replacing. And we'll check this other, other idler pulley here. That one sounds a lot better, but these things were only like 10 bucks each. So I'm just gonna do them. I'm already halfway here. Half the job of this is pulling all the stuff off like the skid plate and the belt. So what is two more bolts to pull these pulleys out? I stand corrected. There is three pulleys. Here is one idler pulley. Here is a second idler pulley. And here is a third pulley. This being the tensioner pulley. So, you know, I actually did not order this one. I'm going to call up to the auto parts store and see if they have this in stock. Hopefully they do. That would be really handy if they did because I really don't want to have to wait for parts and I want to get this thing back on the road today. So ideally I'm going to do all three though, mainly because I feel this side to side slop and I'll check with the new ones to see if that's supposed to be there, but I'm not totally sure on that. Just going to try to do them all. Okay, this top pulley I'm going to do first and this is a 13 millimeter. So just going to get a ratchet on it and all right. That one loosened up pretty good. Next one I'm going to do is this front pulley. This is also a 13 millimeter. got those two off gonna get them on the bench take a good look make a few phone calls and see if anybody has this tensioner pulley in stock since I'm already down here I might as well make an attempt at least to change it today I do want to get this van back on the road today so if they don't have it I'm gonna put it back together but if they have it that would be wonderful well I have some good news and some bad news if you're gonna be doing this job the bad news being that this tensioner assembly is one assembly. Of course, they don't just sell you this pulley by itself, a $6 or $10 pulley. You gotta buy this whole assembly. This right here from AutoZone 2022 prices is $122. Luckily, they're gonna have it by 130, so I'm gonna go pick it up. But in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little bit of experimentation. This is the front idler pulley that I bought for $5.99 and it is very similar in size to the pulley that is on the tensioner. It's about two millimeters smaller all the way around, so I would say about four to five millimeters smaller altogether, but with the way this tensioner works, I don't know really if that's gonna make a difference. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this pulley off and see if maybe that this pulley bolts on. If that's the case, I'm gonna order one of these and save a bunch of money that way. All right, this was a 13 millimeter to pull this off. And it looks like the diameters might be exactly the same. So we'll slide that one on and see. Kind of feels like it. 
So I'm wondering really how much of a difference that little pulley uh, being, you know, five millimeters smaller actually makes. I think it's going to work. So I'm going to call AutoZone and see if they have this pulley in stock. If so, I'm just going to go buy one of those. Alright, here is the solution to the tensioner dilemma. Instead of buying the $122 tensioner uh, assembly because they don't sell this pulley by itself, I ended up buying one extra idler pulley here. And again, the diameter is a little bit smaller. It's about five millimeters smaller all the way around. But with the way the tensioner works, I really don't think that's going to make a difference whatsoever. Any issues with clearance or anything, I don't think it's going to be affected. And they had the pulley in stock. So hopefully this helps you out if you're in this dilemma here where you need an extra pulley or need to replace this, but don't want to buy the $122 tensioner assembly. Time to get this stuff all back on the van and get this thing on the road. Now, these pulleys came with these little silver caps to help keep moisture out. The stock ones did not have them though, and I'm gonna leave them off because I just tried to put this one on with the caps and it made some dragging noise. So, those are just gonna go bye-bye. Time to do the front one. Now these pulleys don't have an outside or an inside. There is no marking on them. They are universal in that respect. And the bolt's a tapered bolt, and that's what gets it to actually center up into place. Two down, nice and smooth, just have the tensioner to go. Okay, everything looks good. I think that pulley's gonna work out perfectly. Still cannot believe that they would not have a part number for that specific pulley. Why they would leave that one out, I have no idea other than, well, I'll just leave you to interpret why they would leave that one out. But now it's time to do the belt. And I'm gonna start with this back one here. I'm just trying to get everything lined up. And you know, like I said before, it's good to take a picture to know exactly how it goes. But you can kind of tell just by looking at the things because some are the rib pulleys, some are the flats. So just based on that, you can tell what you got to do. I'm going to leave the tensioner side out for now until I get it close. So that's going to go there, this part here, this part there. Yep, definitely going to use a breaker bar. Okay, when you got it close, just make sure all the ribs are on before you start the vehicle up. Take a good look at all the pulleys and make sure you got everything where it's got to go. None of the ribs are crossed or not on all the way. And here everything appears to be good. So let's check out this clearance with this new pulley that we put on the tensioner. Again, all this pulley here is that I replaced for the tensioner is the same exact pulley as this one. This is not something that they're gonna tell you at the dealership or they're gonna sell you online. This is something that I just figured out while I was doing this here. And the clearance. So 
five millimeters difference in the size of the pulley does not appear to make whatsoever any difference in the routing of the belt. So, I'm gonna start this thing up, double check everything, but it looks like we are good to go. And everything worked out perfect. So time to just put this thing back together. There is a few things I need to do beforehand. So that's gonna conclude this video. I'm gonna change this half shaft uh, clamp out too. And there is oil in these. You can see it's leaking all over. This was a temporary thing I had to do last time I was working on the van. So I'm gonna put a permanent clamp on there. Also need to change out my ABS sensor while I have this thing kind of apart. But to put this thing back together, all it is now is just a matter of putting the skid plate back on. Hopefully you can figure that out on your own, but the rest of it, good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I have a ton of ProMaster content out and coming out, and hopefully you're tuned in for the next one, and hopefully this helped you out saving some money and some time on your Ram ProMaster, or any 3.6 Pentastar for that matter. Thanks for watching.